Hello everybody, Off Grid Maker here. Today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make a 25 gallon steel at home for under $300. And I'm gonna make it out of this stainless steel pot right here that I found online. Comes with a drain valve to go down in the bottom. Also comes with a thermometer uh, that screws directly into the side so you can monitor the temperature of your wash and everything you need to uh, put these parts together come with it. You've got the back nut and two O-rings and you'll put one O-ring on the outside then one O-ring on the inside and then you'll tighten down the nut and if you can tell the nut has a recessed edge that's the side that goes against the wall and against the o-ring to tighten it down and seal it it's the same thing with the uh, drain valve two row rings and a back nut with the recessed edge that will go against the inside wall of the steel and against the o-ring also the lid i didn't start the video before I had already taken the lid, but if you'll notice, there's a uh, convex uh, side to this. Originally, that was concave. The, the curved, the little dome side went down, and for a steel, that's not a real good idea, so I took it to the welder and had him flip that over. He cut it out, he flipped it over and welded it back, and then I also had him uh, weld on a two-inch nipple so that I can screw on the copper column that will go on top and there was no cost involved with that he was willing to do some trading it also comes with uh, to seal those threads so I'm gonna go ahead and install this these uh, uh, the, the thermostat on and or the thermometer and the drain valve I'm gonna go ahead and screw those on and I'll be back okay I'm back I've got the thermometer installed and oriented correctly I've also got the uh, drain valve installed and I oriented it so that it would close and open vertically uh, could have put it horizontally but it just seemed like it might have been crowded right there too close to the, ther uh, the thermometer and so the next step is to create a gasket on this lid so that when you seal this up, everything's nice and tight and nothing's leaking. So what you want to do is set the lid on the pot first and notice the orientation of the lid and whether this lip, uh, see how it fits inside of this channel of the lid so that you know where to put your gasket. And so on, on this one, I noticed that the lip is closer to the outside edge of the channel. So that's where I'm gonna put the bead. And you've gotta use something uh, that is food grade. You wanna make sure you're not using anything unless it's lead free. Uh, there is a food grade silicone that you can buy um, what I found is a Permatex gasket maker, it's ultra seal, uh, ultra copper sealer, and you got to make sure that it will withstand the heat that you're going to be using. So as long as it goes up to, you know, the, the highest you're going to be running the steel is 205. So as long as the temperature rating is above that and it's lead free, mm -hmm. you're good to go. So. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that bead in this channel on the lid. I'm also going to put plastic wrap on the pot because once we put the bead on the lid, we're going to set it on the pot so that it can form to the pot and make a good seal. But you don't want it sticking to the pot. You want it to only stick to the lid. So you've got to put the plastic wrap on the pot first and then you put the bead on the lid. The directions say to let it sit for an hour with, the, with it just sitting there. After an hour, clamp it down into the position that it will 
permanently bin and then you've got to let it sit for 24 hours. So that's what we're going to do. And I'll leave links for this product, although you can get it at your local um, hardware store, auto parts store. I'll also leave a link for this pot where I found it. I bought it on Amazon and I'll leave a link there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get this bead put on and I'll be back. As you can see, I've got the plastic wrap on the rim of the pot and I've put my copper bead, continuous bead all the way around the lid on the outer edge of the channel and now I'm just going to set it up there and let the weight of the lid uh, kind of softly squish the gasket maker for an hour and then uh, there we go and then we will come back and clamp it for 24 hours and then we'll be ready to move on so tomorrow I will continue with this build and show you guys the rest of it well everybody it's uh, been over 24 hours it's actually been about 48 hours I wasn't able to do anything with this last night and so you can see I've got a, everything clamped down these are the same clamps I use when I'm running the steel um, it doesn't have to be clamped tight the you only have to um, you only have about two to three PSI when you're running the steel so it just has to have a nice seal no gaps in the seal and then some clamps on it and um, it'll hold just fine the what we're looking for when we pull this off is that the gasket has been flattened out and there's no longer a bead so you can see how the gasket got flattened out by the rim uh, at least I hope you can see I, I don't know if you can see in the camera or not but um, there, there's a little flat ridge on the bead all the way around so that should mean that when when I clamp it down and run the steel there shouldn't be any leaks so we'll see how that turns out this spot over here is just barely flat so we'll see I might have a problem there if I do I'll just remake the seal and that's what we're after and now you can pull this plastic off and so now the seal is permanently attached to the lid which is what we wanted so that's it uh, the next video I'll be putting the copper column on, putting all the pieces together for the um, condenser, and it'll be ready to run. See you next time.